Can you tell me how long has he been a priest and have you officiated at many weddings? Mm-hmm. Well, I've been, I've been 32 years a priest, mm. 1976, July, July 76. And over the last 32 years, I would, uh, I've done over, I've kept count of them. I've uh, roughly about 1,300 couples I've been privileged to marry in that space of time. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of couples and it's, 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 it's a lot of people, I suppose, yes. And it's been, by and large, I've enjoyed it. And it's a privilege to, I suppose, to help people on their way. Mm. And if I've been of any assistance to any couple, I'm delighted that I have been. And if not, they will be the judge of that. Can you tell me, have weddings changed since you first started? Have they gotten bigger? Have the, have the ceremonies mm. got shorter, quicker? Mm. Have they changed or are they the same? Mm. Well, I was, I suppose, I had the advantage in the sense that um, I've been down the country. I've worked in the country as a priest and I've worked in Dublin. And weddings in the country are appreciably larger than they are in the city. And I would say that that's largely because of cost. In the city here, where I've been for the last 20, 27, 20, 27 years, um, I would say the average people at a wedding are between 80 and 100 that's in, in, in the city. It's a lot of people. It's, it's, it's a huge, it's a massive expense for a couple. Mm. I remember two years ago, July 2007, I had three weddings in the course of one week, and here's what happened. The first wedding, I cannot reveal the hotel, first wedding cost 57 grand for the couple, for the wedding reception alone. I, there was 421 out of them. And that's so the, the, the second couple, giving it's an interesting insight, but there was 38 at it. Yeah. And the wedding cost 120 euro. Sensible people. And I remember at that wedding, um, the, the bride knew uh, the owner of a pub. She hired a room and he gave her the room for the day. And people bought their own drink as they needed it. Yeah. Right. Okay. The next question then, which leads on to that, are mm. more or less people getting married today, do you think? Well, from my perspective as a priest, I mean, I, I have more weddings than I ever had. Have you? I have. Mm. I would do roughly now, maybe, oh, gee, Chris, this year, I would do between 50 and 60 weddings per annum what over the course it? of a year. I just don't know why. I mean, people all over the place are telling me that, that less and less couples are getting married in the church. Um, I just don't know. My own experience has mm. been that that is not a soul. Um, it, may not, it may not be the experience of other priests. Um, I suppose maybe that's due to the fact that I'm involved with Cord, uh, the yes, pre-marriage yeah. courses, and I give them. And I suppose from that, I, I, I learned that whereas in North Air couples might not be church going, mm. they still have a spiritual side to them and, a spirit, and they want a spiritual aspect to their weddings. And po- possibly because of that, many, are, uh, many still decide to get, many, uh, to get married in church okay. rather than go to a DJ, mm. a district justice. Yeah. And it's their decision. Mm. Uh, yes. Down to the, the, to, to the bones of it then. Mm-hmm. On the day of the wedding, what should the groom and the bride, how should, well even before, how should they prepare for the big day? Well, I think they should give them the best possible chance, to give themselves the best possible chance to have the best possible marriage that they can possibly have. And anything that facilitates or helps there is worth doing. Should they have a rehearsal? Should they come and speak to you? Before? Oh yeah, I would never ever, I don't think I've ever in my life can I remember? I don't think I've ever done a wedding without, without rehearsal. Without now, sometimes, sometimes it's awkward. You have to fit people in. I've done rehearsals at 12 o'clock at night at times and what, because I believe in it. And what's involved in the rehearsal there? Are, are, are you going to go through the ceremony? Or are you going mm. to tell the couple exactly? Are you going to try and hammer home exactly what they're doing? Because marriage is a yeah. very serious thing. Mm. I won't tell the couple anything, mm. but I'll try and work through the ceremony in conjunction with them and try and go through every aspect of the ceremony, uh, the ceremony from the readings and the prayers of the faithful. And I would, actually, I would actually strongly encourage that all participants in the wedding would be at that rehearsal because it makes a huge difference on the day. It's like anything else. It's easy to perform a wedding ceremony, but I tend to look at the quality of it. And I yeah. think every bride and every groom deserves the best possible day they can possibly have. And that demands a bit of work. Yeah. Okay, what instructions would you give to the parents? Mm-hmm. You know, just before that, yeah, mm-hmm. before I was going to tackle that, just, can I just say, what, I did a wedding about uh, five, five months ago, I'd say, a du- two Dublin people, a bride and groom, he was mm-hmm. a dub, and he was ferociously nervous before the ceremony. So here's what he did, you won't believe this. 
He was a big strapping fella. He was about six foot. He was so big, he nearly block out the sunlight. But anyway, he was outside and he was fierce, fierce nervous. Do you know what he did? While he was waiting for his bride-to-be, he came into the church by himself and he brought his three groomsmen with him. And he went up to the side altar here and he knelt down for five minutes. I have never... And he just said his own prayer. What he said was between him and God. And he asked it, he says, lads, you're my best men. Will you sit down there and pray that my marriage will be successful? So. And he was so unashamedly doing so. Mm-hmm. After the five minutes, he got up, came over into the front seat and waited for the bride to beat. I, waited for his bride. I have never in my life seen any groom prepare like that. But I think even doing something as small as that can really prepare you for the rest of your life. Yes. Because he was putting his faith He was putting, and he, he didn't mind who, he mm. didn't give a hoot. He wasn't apologetic. Yeah. He did not mind who, who saw him. Mm. He just, well, that was something he believed in and something that he did. And he got up and then, how can the guests that are attending the ceremony and reception, now they're attending the ceremony, yes. how can they contribute to the wedding ceremony? Well, I think... First is by being on time for the wedding. I know I, I do accept that brides tend to come late. Uh, but I think by, by attending the entire ceremony, I meet some guests at times, and they skip the actual church part of the ceremony. They go straight to the reception. Now, I know it's a celebration. Mm-hmm. I know that well. And, and I accept that. But I think that's to do a fierce discourtesy to any groom who have invited you to the full ceremony um, of their wedding. I think it's nice to to pray for the couple who are actually taking their vows f- um, before the altar. I think that's one way the guests can actually help them. Um, possibly a second way that they can help them is, is, is after the wedding ceremony, will you stay in touch with them? Many young couples getting married today. It's a big undertaking and it's a hell of a life in front of them. Stay in touch. I think that's important because so many people... Another one, my final question here, is it ever too old to get married? No. That's a I definite no. That's a definite no. He's never too old to get married. If you meet someone and you fall in love, that's never... It doesn't matter. I, there's, an old, there's an old fable, a story told about a couple that were both in their 80s getting hitched, married for the first time. He was 85, she 83 took the vows and after taking the vows uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the church they decided to go from they got married in Dublin and decided to go to their honeymoon down in Tralee Mount Brandon Hotel they headed down there he was driving he was driving a Fiat 128 is it a 128 126 I think they were 128 128 and he drove all yeah exactly he drove all the way for four or five hours down to Kerry problem didn't stop at all the problem was when they got to Tralee he spent the entire honeymoon trying to get out of the care he was stiffened up <laughs> That's very he's good. never too old to get married well, Arthur, thank you very very I'll much you're very welcome. invaluable advice thank, thank you, you.